Okay, so here is um, a frequency table. I've used this frequency table a lot, but this time I'm going to use it to find the mean of a frequency table. So um, let's say that I have this frequency table from a data set. And again, you know, I don't have the data set in front of me. And I want to find the average, um, the average number of calls from that data set. I don't have the, the values from the data set to be able to sum them up and then divide by the total number of data values, right? So I have to do it from this table. So how do I find the mean of a frequency table? So well, let's think about this. Um, I talked about this earlier. If I, you know, if I want to represent this class, I have no idea, you know, what these numbers are, how many data values, or what these data values are within this class. I don't know if, you know, they represent 28 or 29 or anything in between these two or, or inclusive of these two uh, values. I don't know what these 13 data values exactly are. I just know what range they're within. So, you know, what did we say would represent the class as well? We said that the class midpoints would be a representative of these classes. Um, so, really quick, how did we find the class midpoints? We added up 28 plus 65, added up the um, values, and then divided by 2. 46.5 is the first class midpoint. And I think we said that the class width of this frequency table was 38, so I'm just going to add 30. Eight to get to the next one, so 84.5, and I'm going to add 38 again to go and get to the rest of these class midpoints, 122.5 um, plus 38, 160.5, and then plus 38 for the last class midpoint, uh, 198.5. So these are my... Um, and, and I, I always said to double check that last one to make sure that you didn't make a mistake. So I would do like 180 plus 217 divided by 2 to double check and make sure that, you know, all the stuff makes sense and goes along together. So these are my class midpoints. Now, I want you guys to think about, um, I'm going to take away this. I'm going to represent these with X's. So these are going to be X's, my data values, okay? Um, now, if you, if you think about this, right, when you're adding up a bunch of numbers, if I take the number 3 and I add it 3 or 4 times, that's the same thing as saying 3 times 4. If I take the number 3 and I add it 2 times, it's the same thing as saying 3 times 2. So I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that 46.5 represents this class, and there's two values in that class. So 46.5 is going to get multiplied by 2. Because really what I want to do is say 46.5 plus 46.5. So <clears throat> I'm going to do that for each of these. Um, 13 values are represented by 84.5. Um, 10 values are represented by 122.5. 3 values are represented by 160.5. And 3 values are represented by 198.5. So <clears throat> in a sense, I am kind of adding up the values, but I'm using multiplication to make it faster. Ah, multiplication... <laughs> rules. Uh, so 2 times 46.5, let's just write these out, 93, um, so this is 93, so 13 times 84.5, pretty soon I'm going to start using my TI-84, 1098.5, uh, oops, I don't want that line, okay, 1098.5, um, go back, go back, go back, okay, Oh, I don't need the calculator for this one. 10 times 122.5 is 1225. Move the decimal place one place to the right. 3 times 160.5, 481.5. And then 3 times 198.5 is 595.5. Okay, so what did I do? So I took, these are representing my data values. I took each of them, and remember that frequency we represent as small f2. I took each of them and I multiplied them by their corresponding frequency. So I did f times x. That's what this column represents, right? Um, now, remember that to take a mean, what you want to do is add up all the values, right? 
So 93 represents 46.5 plus 46.5. 1098.5 represents 84.5 plus 84.5, blah, 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 13 times. 120, uh, 1,225 uh, 1, represents 122.5 added 10 times and so on and so forth. And what I want to do is add all these up so that I get the sum, right, of all the um, data values. So let's, let's add that up. So let's see what I get. I get 93 plus 1098.5 plus 1225 plus 481.5 plus 595, I don't want to make a mistake here, 0. 0.5. And I get, that's why I'm, 3493.5, 3493.5. So this 3493.5 is representing the sum of all these data values. And I found that by taking the sum of all of these products, okay? Now I'm working notation because I'm going to create the formula for this. So, so far, I want to find a sample mean because it's a mean from a frequency table. A uh, frequency table could be sample uh, from a sample. And what did I do? To represent the sum of all the values, I had to take the sum of the products of each frequency times the corresponding midpoint. So X represents the class midpoint of each class, right? And then F represents, let me use a different color, F represents the frequencies, right? And then <clears throat> what do I have to do at the end? You know, I want to divide by the total number of data values in the data set. So what would represent the total number of data values in the data set? So hopefully you remember that the sum of the frequency column will give you the total number of data values in the data set. If I add up all these, there's 31 data values in the data set. So um, the denominator of this formula is the sum of all the frequencies. So this formula might look worse than it is, but it's a natural movement, um, similar to what we do when we just find a regular sample mean. You add up all the values and divide by the total number of values that are there. It's just a matter of, because it's from a frequency table, the midpoint is representing each class, so you have to multiply it by its frequency, how many times it's represented, and then add them all up to get the sum, or what's representing the sum, of all the data values, and then the sum of the frequency column represents the total number of data values. So if I want to approximate the mean of this data set by using this frequency table, x bar would be this sum here, 3493.5 divided by 31. So well, let's see what I get. 3493.5 divided by 31. Okay, so again, I'm rounding to the nearest Tenth, so I got 112.7. So this is approximately 112.7. Now again, this is an approximate um, um, mean of the data set because I don't have the actual data set in front of me. So this is an approximate mean, but this is a good approximation. It's coming from this frequency table. So this is my sample mean of the data set represented by this frequency table.